Hi everyone, in this quick screencast I'm going to show you how to use server-side scripting with events. So in some of the other tutorials we showed scripting, we talked about how to create a custom API. In this particular example we're going to attach a server-side script, also you can think of it kind of as a webhook, to an event. And an event is really any API endpoint. They, events can occur on both requests and on responses on any API call that uh, you make inside of Dream Factory. So to set up our example, it's going to be really simple just to demonstrate the power of this scripting feature. We have a MySQL database with some contact records, and what we want to do is actually get some data and mash it up. So we want to connect some Mongo database data, which happens to have a Twitter handle, and but the, unfortunately that data doesn't reside in our MySQL database, but we want it to be returned. So we're going to go out and make another API call when a contact is requested, and we're going to go fetch the Twitter handle for the email address in the Mongo collection that matches the email address in here. So in the end, when we've enabled the script, we'll get data returned, which will return the Twitter handle that's from a, a Mongo database, and hence that's why we call this field from Mongo Twitter, just to demonstrate the uh, functionality here in this demo example. So let's set this up. The first thing we want to do is make sure that we've got a Mongo service. So MongoDB comes built in with Dream Factory if you get it from Bitnami or you can just add your own Mongo database instance and connect to it from Dream Factory. And we've got to have some Mongo data so we can go through our example. So we'll hop on over to the MongoDB API and let's just make sure that we've got some records. If you're following along this example, you could just post some records, create a contact collection, and then post a, a few simple examples of some contacts and make sure you put an email address and a Twitter handle. So when you ha have that all set up, you'll have a request to the contact in Mongo and you'll get back a Twitter handle and an email address back. So pretty straightforward there. So now what we want to do is our flow is going to be when we make a request to MySQL API for this particular contact object, after that request has occurred we will get some JSON back and we're going to post process, meaning that the JSON will get returned and then with that JSON we have an email address that we can then use as a key to make a call to the Mongo database API. And we're going to append a filter that which contains the email address to actually fetch the matching um, Twitter handle by email that exists in that MongoDB collection. So again, we make the API call to MySQL, get some JSON back which has some contact data, get the email address, go out to Mongo, get the Twitter handle, and return that along with the contact information from the MySQL database back to the client as one uh, unified piece of JSON. So the way we do this, uh, we're using V8 here. You could also pick Node.js or PHP. This example will just be in V8. So we need to make this active first. So when we save this, it'll be active. And what we're doing is we're using Lodash. So you can require, you can use libraries, and I'll show you in a moment where to do that to make our looping a little bit easier. And we're going to say if uh, there's some content in the response, meaning that some data was returned from MySQL, we're going to loop through the JSON array, which contains key value uh, pairs for each of those records. And we're actually going to dump the record uh, so it goes in the logs. This is helpful for uh, debugging and just kind of seeing what's going on. And I'll show you at the end where you can see that in the logs. Create a simple variable, which is going to hold a param. And we're going to use basically a, a filter string. So we have a key for filter and we're going to basically get the email address from the MySQL database record for each of the records in the array. And then we're going to use that to create another variable which will contain a result. So we're going to do a platform.api.get on this Mongo database and that's going to have the email address from our MySQL contact record. We can also dump the result here so you can see that. And then the final thing is we're going to append basically record dot for Mongo Twitter. Remember that's our that's our uh, field value for the MySQL contact uh, record. And we're going to make that equal to uh, resource um, with index of zero dot Twitter. Remember the arrays that are returned, uh, the JSON arrays are, are wrapped in a resource. So we're just going to get the zero index of that resource and we're going to return um, the Twitter handle as we loop through each of the Mongo records that match the email addresses in our MySQL database. 
And then the other thing is, remember, we're actually transforming the JSON. So we make the API request, we get the response back with a piece of JSON, which doesn't have uh, a Twitter handle, but then we're going to add that. So we're transforming the response. So we also need to make event.response.content underscore changed equal to true at the end of our looping here. And we wrap all that up and then make sure that it's active. And then you can save it. And what that's going to do is when we go back, we'll show this in a couple ways. We'll show first when we go back to uh, let me get rid of this. When we go back to data here and go to our MySQL database, we'll set that service, and now we'll see the Twitter handles there. So this is going and in, in matching uh, by email address and pulling that from Mongo. And then if we go into our API docs, we can go straight to uh, the MySQL database. So you'll see the actual API call that's invoking that script. So if you go here and retrieve some records, which to do a get here, and remember we're going to go to our contact table in the MySQL database and we're going to do that and so what's happening is without that script this would be returned as null but now that we made that script active it's actually pulling from Mongo and returning all of this so basically this API call is going out and, and getting data from two different databases one is a MySQL database the other is a Mongo NoSQL database and returning it as one unified JSON array back to the client so that's a quick, quick example of how event scripting works uh, there are a number of other examples. If you go to wiki.dreamfactor.com and hop into the tutorials, we're building out more and more examples. And you can see scripting here. Uh, as you can see, we're building these out. But hopefully by the time you're viewing, we'll have a lot more of these. Node.js is on its way. Um, so look out for that as well. But really, any of the logic that you can implement on endpoints, um, you can do in, in any of these ways here. The other quick thing I want to show is where you can find some logging information and also how you can add libraries for your scripts. So if you have Dream Factory here installed here, I'm running on a Mac locally, you can hop into the directory where Dream Factory is contained, go into apps, Dream Factory, htdocs, and then look in storage and you'll see a couple directories that are useful. One is the scripting library. So this comes out of the box with lodash and underscore built in, but you can add other JavaScript libraries. Um, or PHP libraries for that matter that you want to you that basically that you want your scripts to use secondly is logs so if you open up logs and I'll just show an example if you're dumping information out like I'm looping through here on my script and dumping the records and this will actually show you what's coming back and so this is really helpful for debugging we dump the record we dump the result for each time that we're looping through and then we can see kind of what's going on a little bit under the hood so that's helpful uh, as well. So that's it. Um, hopefully this is helpful to everyone. Check out www.dreamfactor.com and check out our resources page. We have a bunch more videos, examples, documentation, and a whole lot more. Uh, so thanks for your time.